like I had reached a, 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 a comfortable dysfunctional normal, which was, which was pretty big. But then because of COVID, I stopped working out, making excuses, right? Stopped doing PT and boom, I ballooned up to the biggest I've ever been. And it was, it was emotionally, to be honest, with you, it was devastating. I mean, it was brutal. It was just devastating. I had hit my emotional, like it was like, I'm like, I was done. Like, okay, God, I'm like, I am desperate. I need some help. And again, this is something I've struggled with my entire life. This isn't just like, oh man, no, you know, COVID, COVID weight. <laughs> no, man, I've, I've had COVID weight my whole life. Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you've hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. What is going on? Long time, no chat. Great to see you all, world changers, leaders, influencers. Super excited to share with you guys how I have been able to lose 30 LBs. What? 30 pounds in two months and have also, thank God, overcome a food addiction for like most of my life. This is this is life-changing <laughs> for me personally. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, well, you know, it doesn't doesn't apply to me, but for me, man, this is life-changing uh, skinny. No no pun intended. So, I'm going to share kind of some my journey a little bit and then I'm going to give you seven points or seven lessons that I've learned along this journey. So, so again, the bluff, right? The bottom line up front, I've lost, I'm down 30 pounds as of today. I'm down 30 pounds in two months um, and feel amazing, uh, amazing for many, many reasons. I've Early on in the journey, probably the first, uh, the first few weeks maybe, I was swimming almost a mile a day. I'd gotten to where I was swimming a mile a day, which I hadn't done that since I was stationed in Egypt for six months. And I was able to swim in the Red Sea. And so I was able to swim because my back was out and I was not able to, to roll, do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because my, my back was out at the time. Plus, obviously, COVID ops and stuff as well. So joints are feeling better. I'm thinking more clearly. I feel amazing. I don't feel the constant guilt of being as big as I was or just of being addicted to food. So tough and I'm feeling better in every area of my life, personally and professionally. Okay, so so now some background, some quick context. So I had reached, so two months ago, I had reached the biggest I have ever been in my entire life. Like I had reached a a a, a comfortable dysfunctional normal, which was which was pretty big. But then because of COVID, I stopped working out, making excuses, right? Stopped doing PT and Boom, I ballooned up to the biggest I've ever been. And it was it was emotionally, to be honest with you, it was devastating. I mean, it was brutal. It was just devastating. I had hit my emotional, like it was like I'm like, I was done. Like, okay, God, I'm like, I am desperate. I need some help. And again, this is something I've struggled with my entire life. This isn't just like, oh man, no, you know, COVID, COVID weight. <laughs> no, man, I've I've had COVID weight my whole life. And so I've always felt like I was troublicious my, my whole life. And so th this is a, that's why I'm saying this is a massive, massive victory in W for me. Um, and I've got my notes here. So if you see me looking to the side here, so I'm looking at here. I, but, but here's the thing is I've always been athletic. So it's been also frustrating to be 
an athletic dude in a fat guy body, you know, in those big sumo suits, you know, except I'm, my, I don't have, mine's not a suit. <laughs> so it's been frustrating. And so, so what happened was, boom, um, you know, so, so when I hit that biggest point, my, my, my biggest weight I've ever hit, it just, and I pray, oh my God, man, I, I am desperate. Like I need, I need something. What I'm stuck. I'm eating constantly, literally from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm eating, I'm grazing, I'm eating. I have meals, I have snacks between the meals. I fast between meals, between breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner. Uh, I eat fast when I'm eating, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And so during that time I prayed, literally that same night that I prayed, a buddy of mine called who I haven't heard of, you know, we haven't had, you know, we haven't been in like regular communication necessarily. And just kind of out of the blue, he calls me up. And Noble, how's it going? His name's Dan, super dude. And I'll leave you his contact information and stuff too. He said, you know, he asked me how I was doing and we caught up a little bit. I'm like, bro, what's going on? He's like, man, I'm still rocking this intermittent fasting thing. I'm like, dude, what's going on? I'm like, I am desperate, bro. He's like, well, it's the thing I told you about a few years ago. He had already told me about this, intermittent fasting. But I hadn't hit rock bottom. And the other huge thing was I was still emotionally unhealthy. We've been, many of you guys know, we've been on the serious emotional growth journey now for the past few years. So I was emotionally unhealthy. I hadn't hit a, a, a low point, you know, in, in my life at that stage with my weight. And so I'm like, okay, whatever, Dan, you know, you just popped out of the womb and he looks amazing. He's in his fifties and is shredded. So I'm like, dude, what, you know, what can you tell me about, you know, losing weight? Cause like you've like, you're always shredded. And so I, I didn't listen to him a few years ago. I just kind of blew it off. Whatever, dude. He calls me at this night, this particular night, two months ago, and I was all ears, all ears. And he started rattling, rattling off to me, not only his own success story, but success story after success story after success story of all these other people he's helped lose truckloads of weight and get healthier. And so, man, I was all ears. So he told me about, again, this concept called intermittent fasting and and, and again, here's my disclaimer. I'm not a, I'm not a shrink. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a, a nutritionist. I'm not a, a doctor. You know, I don't play one on TV. So this is all skinny that I have gotten from Dan about this whole stuff. He shared with me this concept called autophagy, autophagy, A-U-T-O-phagy, <laughs> P-H-A-G-Y, I think. So, and it's something like where the, after you fast a certain period of time, it's like between 14 and 16 hours, your and beyond, your healthier cells like do house cleaning with your weaker cells in your body. And so, you know, he and he's done a truckload of research. I mean, he I, I would almost argue he probably has a master's degree in this area, even though he hasn't studied it like officially, like in a school or university, but he's he's done amazing amount of research on this stuff. So the gist is when your body is, is not eating anything, that's when it can go to work. It's like going to sleep. When you sleep, your brain does all your house cleaning. It, you know, it, it does all the organizing. It, it, it's able to, to repair itself, right? Because So that's the brain's opportunity. When we sleep is the brain's opportunity for us to, to, to get our heads right. I mean, again, if you try the two or three... Uh, sleepless nights where you, you know, you haven't slept in, in two or three days. I used to do that when I was, when I was a young Lieutenant in the army, you know, on missions or whatever, or just work and stuff. I just wouldn't sleep for a few days in business and stuff. And back then it was three days and I'd start to slur. Well, now it's, it's, you know, 24 hours and I start to slur. So your brain obviously loses its, its, its capacity. The more fatigue we get, well, unbeknownst to me, the same happens when we're constantly eating our bodies don't get an opportunity to start healing itself because it's always focused on eating. And uh, it's like being awake with your body all the time. And so the longer that, that you allow yourself to fast, again, this 14 to 16 hour or 16 hours, I think it's the 16 hours is the sweet spot, 16 hours and beyond. Then the body has 16 plus hours 
to do house cleaning is kind of how I'm imagining it, you know, for the cells to, to really to work on, on healing and stuff. The other thing that he shared with me is um, about a couple hours before, before you break the fast and have that first meal is, is good to, to get your body revved up. So doing exercises, even if it's body weight squats or a walk or something like that during that, during that, you know, one or two hours, couple hours before you fast, before you break the fast and you have that first meal of the day, you want to, to, to get your, your engine revved, your body revving through some PT. Um, the, the other things you want to be drinking lots of water, uh, uh, you know, make sure your water intake is, is really on point. Straight black coffee is fine. Hot green tea is fine with no sweeteners. So you really want to dial in the first two weeks of this are really important. Um, it is what he's telling me, you, you know, the first two weeks were really important. So he's like, you really try to eat clean your first two weeks. And then of the first two weeks, the most important meal is the first meal because the cells are the hungriest. Like they're sharks, right? They're ready. Like they're, they're, they've been fasting for 16 hours plus and they're ready to, 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 to totally uh, uh, recycle whatever you put in your mouth, that first meal. I mean, you know, so that first meal is super important. And so he's like, make sure that first meal is really clean. You know, a, a salad, you know, a protein, a, a protein shake with little carbs. You don't want a bunch of carbs because you want to get your body. And this is all kind of, I guess, part of the ketosis stuff. But again, I'm not going to try to even go into that deal. But all I'm saying is you, you want your body to feed off the existing carbs that you have. So me, I've got a lot of those, right, in the form of fat. And so I want to, to eat as clean as I can for those first two weeks, minimize the carb intake during those first two weeks, um, and eat really clean. And so, um, and then that really helps to kickstart that, you know, you know, your, your intermittent fasting journey. Okay, so some things that have really helped me out on this journey. Um, a, a, a couple of things. So I've, I'm back in a jujitsu now. The past six week, weeks, I've been back in a jujitsu, which has been game changing. So I've been doing an hour or two a day of jujitsu, probably four or five days a week uh, at Prime, which is we love Prime uh, BJJ gym here in Colorado. The other one is I've been taking, I catalog everything that I eat each day. J but here's the thing, though. Don't don't freak out. I just do what I eat and when I eat it and then also when I work out. But I don't do crazy details because the more details for me, it shuts me down. I know some of you guys are like, oh, man, I had 47.3 calories to, you know, at this meal. And this, you know, chicken breast is 18.4753 ounce. Like, I, I can't do that. That's So I, I, I just do, I had a, you know, Chick-fil-A grilled chicken nuggets, eight piece. And, you know, one ounce, you know, one quart of water and a black coffee with no sugar. That's all I put. And then I put the time of when I had that. So I, I for me, I can't do all those crazy details because I'll, I'll stop. I'll just stop the whole thing. The other thing, you know, and in the past, what would happen is I, as soon as I lost weight, I would self-sabotage. I would, oh, I lost 10 pounds. Give me that Ben and Jerry's because I've I've earned it, right? And boom, I'm, I'm ballooned back up to where I was before. So the other thing that's been really helpful for me is I found an app called Fastic. It's free app, Fastic, Fast, I see, Fastic. And it's got these cool graphs and charts. You put when you start the fast, when you break the fast, and it has these cool little charts and graphs and gives you little stars and, you know, all that stuff. But for me, I just like to be able to see in one visual how many hours each day I've been able to fast. So that's been very helpful. It's a free app. And then initially the first few weeks, I was texting Dan my eating journal, what, you know, what I was eating once a week, each week for the first few weeks until I knew like, okay, I'm going to stick with this because guys, for me to stick with this for two months is insanity. Like that might as well be two years. Okay. Based on my, my past track record. My past track record, no kidding. If I was going to try some little diet or some little whatever, I'm going to try. I'm going to eat really healthy. Little, I'm I'm not exaggerating, y'all. Maybe I would last a day, maybe two, 
insanity would be three days, and then I'd I'd start to I'd start to uh, self sabotage. So two months into this, the fact that I'm two months into this and still going strong is redonkulous. Okay, so here's some lessons that I've learned. Seven lessons that I've learned along this journey. Number one, I was emotionally in a valley because I had let myself go, and I was the heaviest I had ever been. So I was I was emotionally like I was that was done. I was like, man, I, I I was desperate. Number two, Dan called me at just the right time. It was right. It was just it was God's timing. I don't know, you know, my I'm a faith, you know, my background is I'm a Christian, and man, I just it, I knew for like because he we hadn't talked in months, maybe well, yeah, months, maybe I don't know, three, four, five, six months, and out of the blue, out of the blue, he calls me up. That's crazy talk. So that's number two. He called me at right at the right time. So I'm thank God for that. Number three, taking notes because that that keeps it on my brain. Okay, all right, keep, keep notes. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm self aware, which is one of the four parts of being emotionally healthy and emotionally intelligent is self awareness. So that helps me cataloging my my you know journaling my what I'm eating it helps me be more self aware and cognizant because literally y'all I would eat and wouldn't even. I'd be into a, I'd be done with a full bag of chips and like not even realize I just tore up a full bag of chips. And I, I'm not joking, y'all. This is true story. Oreos bag done, <laughs> done. Oh man, I just realized I ate a bag of Oreos. Like that's how that's how far off I was, y'all. With how unhealthy emotionally I was in the area of my eating and stuff. Number so that's number three. Is taking notes. Number four. It is so much easier for me to fast when I'm doing PT each day. And my therapy is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It may, may not be your jam, but figure out what your jam is. But there's something emotionally that that, that is, is so energizing and it helps keep me focused with jiu-jitsu. I don't know what it is, but, that, but for some reason, it's a lot easier for me to fast when I'm doing jiu-jitsu each day. So that's just another, that's number four. So figure out what your PT is. What do you enjoy doing? We also got a Peloton bike that my wife's been crushing. She's been rocking that thing. So whatever, again, pick your, pick your deal. What is your, what do you, what kind of PT or exercise do you enjoy doing? And maybe if you're a big giant like me, maybe you start off with bodyweight squats, like literally 10 bodyweight squats, maybe two sets of 10 bodyweight squats. Again, assuming your knees are healthy and stuff. Um, but just something, going on a walk, 30-minute walk, 15-minute walk, just start somewhere, start somewhere. Uh, number five, have an accountability partner or group or something. And about once a week, Dan will send us more of his research on autophagy or on intermittent, intermittent fasting, or he'll give us some new information. He's got a little text thread going, and it's been a really helpful, kind of resets my brain. Okay, got it. Yep, that's helpful. Okay, good. I'm on the right track. That kind of thing. Number six, w w w I know without a shadow of a doubt, I would not be this successful. Two months in, 30 pounds down, if I had not been doing all the emotional work over the past you know, couple of years, two or three years. Because again, I would have success in the past, 10 pounds down, but because it wasn't emotionally healthy, Boom, I self sabotage and I'd go right back to the top again. So, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm necessarily emotionally healthy, I'm emotionally healthier, you know. And I've been on this, this emotional growth journey, um, you know, for, for a few years now. So, that's I know has been very, very helpful for me. Number seven, redefine success. Redefine success. Success for me now is the timing of when I eat, even more than what I actually eat. I used to be like an all or nothing guy. So like, oh man, I didn't eat like Dan because Dan has got his stuff down to like a science. Like, oh, he's got this many grams of this and this much protein, this, a scoop and a half of this and a scoop and a half of that and a little bit of this. He's got his system down. He's been doing intermittent fasting for I think three or four years now. So he's dialed tight, wired tight. I'm not there yet. And so... So even though like my eating is not as dialed in as his eating, I I, I redefine success. Okay, I'm just I because again I've got 
decades of unhealthy baggage in the area of eating. Decades, y'all. This is not like a cute little fad for Noble. This is a, a massive lifestyle change for me. And so I knew, because in the past what would happen is, oh, I'm not doing it as dialed in as Dan. I'm not eating you know, kale, kale chips and kale juice my first meal and apple cider vinegar my first meal. So forget it. It doesn't work. I'm done. And I would just quit everything. And then I'd go back to my Ben and Jerry's and pizza and tacos and stuff. And so now I redefine success. Nope. If I have, maybe I have a carb meal. Maybe my first meal wasn't as dialed in as it could and should be. Maybe I had some, some fries here and there, but I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to give myself lots of grace and space and patience in this journey because I want this to last. I am not doing this for a trend. I'm not doing this for a fad. I've got to get healthier. And so, and as a result of, of, of redefining success, I'm two months into this and I'm 30 pounds down. Now, if I had, had have been as if, if I had been as disciplined and dialed in as Dan the first two months, maybe I would be 60 pounds down right now. I don't care. The fact that I'm two months into this and I'm still going strong with my intermittent fasting and stuff and I'm 30 pounds down, I will take it. That's a massive, massive W for me. So those are my seven lessons learned. If you want to reach out to Dan, again, he is a ninja with this stuff. He can give you, if you are a detail person, he will give you more details than you can shake a stick at about all the different things. Um, so it's fast, the number two, fitness, the number four, life at gmail.com. Fast, two, fitness, four, life at gmail.com. And his name is Dan. And just say, hey, I saw Noble's live video or li I saw Noble's video on the intermittent fasting. Can you give me some skinny and stuff? And he can, you know, get you, send you all kinds of links and information and stuff on, on, you know, how it works and that kind of thing. Uh, so just a couple, a couple things. So, so black coffee's fine. Hot green tea is fine. You know, lots of water exercise. You want to do your exercise again, one or two hours before you break your fast. I like that app fastic F A S T I C fastic. Um, but this journey has been game changing. Really. I mean, my whole psyche is, is improving again. My I'm getting emotionally healthier also as a result. So as a result of my emotional work, I'm getting physically healthier. And as a result of my physical healthierness, I'm getting emotionally healthier. So uh, very excited about, about this whole thing. Um, and you can see some of my emotional growth journey on eqforentrepreneurs.com or our podcast, EQ for Entrepreneurs on all the platforms, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, iTunes and stuff for a lot of our emotional growth journey. So that's it. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully this encouraged you and uh, definitely reach out to Dan and he can get you started if you're, you know, if, you, if this is something that you think would be uh, something that would be helping you out. All right. Have a great day. Bless you.